I'd like to take a moment to introduce the two speakers on our panel. Uh, Monica Hovakova will be the first speaker, is uh, Vice President Brand and Communications of uh, Vodafone. Vodafone's brand is really an expression of its values. And uh, it was fascinating to vo uh, watch this company in operation and listen to a variety of people there. And uh, it's a company that was a startup, which was begun by expatriates in the Czech Republic and had a totally unique personality. And fundamentally, their approach was break all the rules. You're not allowed to wear ties, I think, originally. And they even had a tie rack in the lobby. If you wore a tie, you're supposed to hide the, hang the tie on the tie rack. And I'm told that colleagues occasionally cut the ties off other I mean, it's crazy. But that's the kind of crazy atmosphere that led to fascinating success, breaking the rules for the customers, Monica will talk about. And it's very interesting because it started uh, as a small uh, entrepreneurial organization that was taken over by Vodafone. But Vodafone has shown the judgment and the insight to allow them to retain their own personality with the hope that this personality will then imbue the rest of the, this very large organization. And after that, we will have Dr. Guy Ezekiel, it's another story, but, which is fascinating, but I'll just mention it's another startup that's extraordinarily successful, and uh, I'll talk about uh, Dr. Ezekiel after we listen to Ms. Havakova. Okay, so I'll be talking about a company called Vodafone today, but 10 years ago it was called Oscar. It was really small, small, uh, small company, like small startup, as, uh, as Professor Camillo said. And uh, just imagine that you are in Czech Republic where there is only 10 million people living, so really small country. At that moment when Oscar started, like nobody, nobody on the market believed that we could actually make it. Because there were two big guys already on the market. The, the penetration of the mobile operation it was uh, for, around 40%, and everybody was laughing. It's like, okay, you guys, like it's, it was like a bunch of Canadians that actually started up the business and said, ah, okay, you're going to fail. Like within a year, you're going to be out of this country. It's, it's not true because five years later, Vodafone actually bought a company. i tell you one story which I learned last year because our... Um, the Vodafone Global CEO, Vittorio Colao, came to Prague last, last year and he, he told us a story that Vodafone, of course, like, uh, like as a big, uh, the biggest global company, is, is going uh, to countries and search for, you know, some targets for acquisitions. And he was sent, like in 2003, so basically two years before we were acquired, to Czech Republic, but not to look for the Oscar, but to look at the incumbent company, because it, would, it was number one in Czech market. It was like, uh, according to the strategy of Vodafone, it was more like they were looking for number ones or number twos usually. But he came back, and we didn't know that, but he came back and said, Okay, like the, the blue company, I'm going to call it blue company because today is O2, it wasn't called O2 before. Uh, so like, mm, interesting, but you should really look at Oscar because this is really very special company, like very crazy uh, company culture, but this is wh what you should look, f uh, look for. And then two years, two years later, Vodafone made a move and bought number three in the market, which it didn't, it didn't do um, be any, any time before. So, uh, third operator, and uh, I would say despite the, the strategy breaking the rules for the customers and really looking at like human, human beings, like we are one of the most uh, profitable third operator in the world. And um, uh, we are, since the very beginning when we launched, like when we launched Oscar, it was, it was clear that we couldn't copy the strategies of the, of the, other, of the other two players. So we said, no, like we're going like to make uh, the mobile phone affordable for everybody. So we literally looked at the people uh, and uh, we looked at their needs and said, okay, we're going to be price leader. And, uh, and later on, we developed to a value leadership. Uh, we really were the first ones to come in with the, price, with the price innovations, but also, and what's key to us today, is the customer experience. It's the, uh, it's the, uh, the, the experience people have with us. So we talk uh, actually about people, because if you start in company talk about customers, suddenly it becomes something, you know, like a special like different species, it's not people anymore, it's customers, like it's numbers, etc. So we talk about people. 
it's also when you look at the at the logo it had a smile because it was it was for people and we wanted to people make like like create a smile on their face, so which was also embedded in our advertising, which was very, uh, like a lot of humor there, and we continue with that. But it, it was also about like it's for people. The distinguished culture that uh, John talked about is true. We actually were not allowed to wear ties. Like you would come, like it's, it's basically an open space. Even a CEO doesn't have an office. We, we sit in, 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 in the open space and the CEO moves, moves, moves floors uh, depending where the focus is for the company. So it's, if it's a, let's say, customer, uh, customer um, a center, uh, she, goes, she, she goes there and she sits there. Like if it's finance or if it's, for example, brand and communication where I work, she is with us. So uh, this is this is how we uh, this is how we operate. I also put down that we are a very brand-driven company. Are you going to see it? Like it's very, it's pretty natural for somebody who is responsible for brand and communication talk about brand. But actually, like it was, it, it became one of our differentiators on the market. But we truly believe that like it comes from internal. So how we live internally, the values and the and the culture, it actually transforms outside. Any strategic document that you're going to open, like this is a first, this is a page one. So we ha we have a vision to create the future of the mobile industry. It's not just and like imagine again, like we are in Czech Republic, 10 million people only, but it's about like trying out new things, maybe small, but trying it out. If it doesn't work, we kill it and go go further. So we were one of the first ones. On the, in, in the globe trying uh, mobile advertising, all location-based services. Like, and we had some failures on the way, but we've, like this, this takes you really closer to, to the goals. The other thing, though, is how it's about the customer, the people. So we, we, because most of the people, and we realize it through research, is that don't believe big companies, big corporations. If a big corporation tells you, okay, we're going to do this and this, and like you say, okay, there's going to be some trick behind that. Absolutely. So this is about changing the industry towards the customer, adapting to customer, and uh, being truly a customer advocate. The other part that I'm going to talk about is the purpose, which is in heart in the heart because we feel it comes from here and like our purpose is the breaking the rules for the customer because we realized that as a, as, a, as a whole industry we created a lot of rules, business rules or that actually make customer life much more difficult, like it actually make our life easy like as a corporation and we, re we realized that we have to change it and it's not just about the customers but it's also about the environment around us and I'll come, uh, be, I'll come later to, to that. Uh, Muriel, you saw her on a video, she talked about the values. These came from within the company. These seven values were actually created by the people and I have to tell you that once we created them, which was around 2005, 2006, is like some people from the very senior management have left the company because they couldn't live up to those values. This was a great signal to all the people because they, they realized, oh, like they really mean it. They really mean it serious. They're really serious about it. Okay, I like to work for this company even more. And we truly believe that everything is connected. So how you, like, how you actually live the brand and the values internally, it transports how the brand is perceived uh, externally to the customers, but not only to the customers, but to all the people in the Czech Republic. Then, you cr by that, you create a promise, and you have to deliver on the promise. If you don't deliver on the promise, you, b you basically, you, you don't fulfill the expectations of the customers, and you fail in the reputation. So, this is, this is, this is the par paradigm that we operate, or operate in, uh, in Vodafone. And I tell you, even like people from technology or finance, they understand this. The values, I'm not going to probably talk about it too much because like you, you heard Muriel talking about it, but it's like you, you, you will find this visual on our, uh, on our, like in our lifts and or stairways, and these are our values. We actually really like uh, make decisions based on, 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 those, on those values. And the other thing, which is, w what is what is very interesting, that um, 
Like now, like a year ago, the, the Vittorio Colau, the global CEO, actually announced a new program that is called the Vodafone Way. And it is about actually transformation of the really, truly corporate culture that is prevailing in the bigger countries in Vodafone into something very similar what we have in Czech Republic. So we actually, we help, from Czech Republic, we're helping transforming the whole Vodafone uh, toward uh, more value and human, uh, human companies. So, like, we truly believe in, uh, that the brand, and, like, imagine yourself, you, like, each of you have a brand, like, they, uh, its own brand, and uh, you don't create it by you saying, like, I'm honest, I'm fair, because, like, if you're not, people won't believe, it, won't believe you. So it's actually like it's what they say and the they is employees and that's, that's where the foundation is but also then it, it's, um, it gets uh, to the whole customer base and all people in, uh, in Czech Republic. So in 2006 when we were already uh, Vodafone, it, the, it, we were like imagine these three bigger guys are the operators and uh, the, the line is a fence. It's a fence between the, uh, the industry, all the, the mobile operators, and the small customer who had basically no rights. In, in uh, 2006, we realized, although we were really focused on customer experience and we were rated uh, the best on the customer experience, we realized that we actually, uh, together with the other two bigger ones, create some rules in the industry that make life for customers really, uh, uh, really complicated. So, and if we really true to ourselves and true to our brand, we realized that we have to actually make a make uh, one step and this is really simple but okay we need to get on the other other side of the fence and uh, this is we, we did it by um, introducing a five first customer promises to the market the the first one, for example, treating existing customers better than new. Like Im imagine like that basically it was a one acquisition offer after another from all the three operators, which existing customers couldn't get. Like although they were so beneficial, like they couldn't get it. So we said, no, no, no. From now on, the existing customers first can get everything that like is, uh, is for new customers, but more, we're gonna, we, we're gonna award them for the loyal, loyalty, for the, for, for the tenure that they with us, and we're giving them every, every Christmas, like for four years now, we actually give uh, something for free for like a period of time, let's say half a year, for Vodafone customers. We also do some uh, things like we call it a brand act, but basically like maybe co-create something with, uh, with the uh, Vodafone customers, like we did, like we co-created a, a statue made by Keys, which was uh, a key, was a, was a symbol of the Velvet Revolution. So they collected the keys, they sent it to us, and together with like one famous Czech artist, we collected a statue, and because we broke the, the world record of, uh, of uh, the collection of the keys, we actually gave all the customers for that day, for the celebration of the Velvet Revolution, all SMSs for free. So it's rewarding the customer for being with us, but actually engaging them with what we do. Number three, uh, and it's something maybe unheard of, is like even since the beginning, we never had contracts with the customers. We never forced a customer to sign a contract with us. If a customer wanted to sign a contract, we signed the contract, uh, but we never forced them to sign a contract. So we wanted the customer to stay with us because they want. The other thing also is that like, you don't, we, don't, we, don't dis we, we don't discriminate uh, for, and we give the same benefits for customers that don't sign a contract like for, to, the, to the ones that sign a contract, which is, which, like, uh, you know, the voices were, oh, this is really risky because, like, you know, like they're going to they gonna take the benefits and then run away. But the truth is that they don't run away. They actually stay with us and we're getting market share uh, on, on the market even, even, like, during last year when there was, a, like, the, the, the crisis hit us uh, pretty badly. We're gaining a market share. So it's not true. But like, uh, and it's all is based 
to trust to the people, trust, like trust to the trust to the customer. No fine print. Last thing I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna talk about here is. You know, like you're probably all aware of that, like you have an offer, like great offer, like calling for one crown for free for a month, and then you have a little asterisk below it, and the asterisk says, well, only if you got in Ghana and it's a public holiday. <laughs> so, um, so we said, no, we, we realized that we actually had quite a, quite a lot of those. So we said, no, no, no. And you customers help us because we, we know we have produced a, a hundreds and thousands page, web page, like pages on the web and like some leaflets. So if you find like an asterisk, like tell us, call us, send us an email to a specific uh, email address and, and we kill it. And during a few weeks, we actually were asterisk free. So it's, of course, it's a, a, it's a challenge for uh, preparing the offers, so they are pr profit, still profitable, but it, it works. It, and the smile, we always, we still want to create a smile uh, on, their, on their face. The purpose. The purpose is bigger than making profit. Because we sort of assume that we, be, you know, we make a profit, like we make a profit. But the purpose why we are here is, is much bigger. So it's breaking the rules for the customers. And um, this allows, for example, one example for, let's say, um, imagine a customer care rep on the phone uh, calling with um, with a customer and the customer asking for something that the, the, the call, the, the, the rep actually thinks, hmm, this is pretty logical. Like, okay, and our business rules say, no, you can't do it. So he actually can change it. He, he, in, like he initiates a process, it's a very, very, very efficient process, and he change, changes the, um, the business rule. So over the last three years, we actually killed almost 2,000 business rules or simplified the, the pro procedures. And we actually, uh, the, it's, it's, we actually calculated that it's 38% of the time of sales reps because they had to explain, like, okay, like, unfortunately, Mr. Customer, I do understand you, but, you know, like, we cannot do it. So this is, this is changing and this gives, this also empowers the people on, in the front line because they can change things. They don't, they don't say, mm, like they don't call me and say, Monica, like I just saw this, you know, and I think we should do it. No, like they do it, they do it. They, uh, so that it, it's, it's pretty fast because we encourage them to say, of course they have some scripts, but we say, no, you're talking to people. You are a person like the, on the other side of the, of the phone line is a person. So have a conversation. No, like don't read a script. Okay, this also allows us, and this is funny, and unfortunately like this is in check, so. Uh, but this allows us to play with it, even like externally with the brand. So, so we actually made an appeal to competition to to kill their contracts as well. And how we did it is, this is actually our, like this is, this is our former CEO, like Graham Meyer, he's not, he's not with, uh, he's actually in Qatar now. But we, 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 we basically closed them in the cage on a very public place uh, in the center of Prague. And invited journalists, but for two hours, nothing was happening. It was freezing cold. So uh, <laughs> it started to snow and it was end of March. So it was kind of unexpected, but you know, like, yeah, nobody died. Like everybody, like everybody's healthy. So, and they were, they were really, so like it got a lot of attention, a lot of public media, public, uh, like the media attention. And it was about, okay, if you guys, like you two, like uh, O2 and T-Mobile kill the contracts as well, we actually going to donate like a big sum of money, like it was a uh, couple of hundred thousand crowns to the association for the consumer rights. We did donate the money despite the fact that they, they didn't kill the, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, the contracts, but I have to say that after three years, they're actually starting to offer things without contracts. So we actually see that we're transforming not only us, like the Vodafone, but the whole industry towards better customer experience. So they, they, they did used to display prices without VAT. They now, like all the prices are including VAT, so customer has a fine price. Like it's, uh, the, the, it's about also the, the contract and a lot of other things that we actually started and maybe two years after the competition started to copy. For example, you can try it for a month and then if you don't like it, you can return it to us 
and go, you know, go somewhere else. It took them three years, but now they, they actually offer it as well. So for us, it, for us, it means that we're losing the differentiators and we have to come up with new ones. But there is a lot of things that customers are telling us that they hate about the industry. So we have a, room to, uh, we, we have a lot of room to go. Okay, this is also, this is how we played, how we played with it. So this, is in, this was in cinema, so like it was a toilet paper and the, it was a contract written on that, etc. So it's really very playful and it come, like, you know, this creates the smile on, on, the, on, on, the fa on the faces. Last few slides about the corporate social responsibility because this framework allows us to really do things. And... Um, we know from our people, and I'm getting back to our people again, and their values, like they're telling us we want to work for a company that is social, corporate social responsibility. We, that, and our customers are saying we want to like, buy products from company, company that is corporate social responsible. And uh, John mentioned it a uh, few times, like companies first make profit and then maybe do something and put some money into, into some charities. This is an integral part of our strategy. So we actually, like our goal is to engage within like uh, next two years, 50% of the employees into some of the CSR activities. Today we have over 20, like we probably like 28, like re reaching the 30. So it's a lot of like, it's either foundation activities or, you know, volunteering or some, something else. And people, people love it. And this is how, we, how we're becoming even stronger because it's not about putting some money and giving it to charity but actually engaging everybody in the company. And they do, they do, they do things and they spread the word around because normally they wouldn't be, you know, they don't have time. They work long hours, so they don't have time to do it. But if you, if you actually give them the opportunity to do it, uh, it, it, works, it works really well. So, like, uh, on the previous slide, it was said that, like, corporate social responsibility is one of the key brand pillars. And if I tell you that after... Uh, a first slide that you saw with the heart and the three bubbles, like where we go, how we do things, which is the values, and the strategies which change a bit uh, every year and evolve. Um, we have the second slide always says, okay, this is the brand, and we have four brand pillars. And like all the activities, anything that's happening in the company has to support the four brand pillars. And the first one is the customer experience, is the happy customer. So everything needs to be intuitive, everything, customers are actually involved and in co-creating our product. Value, best value on the market. We, ha we still have to strive to, and it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to do, but this is, this, is, uh, uh, this is our second pillar. Third pillar is the innovation. And as a third player, it's not about number of products we launch. It's about the small things, but the small in things that help customers that maybe save them a little time or make smile on, on their faces, and it's little things. But it's not necessarily like new products every second week. Uh, and the last one, but, no, <laughs> but not least, is CSR. Like it's, it's the core pillar of the brand that then allows actually uh, do, uh, allows us to do a lot of activities and it's not something on top of or something aside uh, the strategies. It's an integral part of the, of the strategies. And I'm going to end my piece with a quote from previous uh, CEO of, uh, of Vodafone. Is the brand is what brand does and we're trying to do and deliver. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you.